Axins. We're going to have a look at the multiple techniques for listening to events. So different ways we can register for events and handle them. Um, so one way is using traditional, you know, web type programming where we have a handler, and another way is using an onclick component. And um, the onclick component just requires us to uh, create a JavaScript function that onclick uh, we can specify with a custom component that um, you'll find on this website. Okay, and this is what the mixins look like. So we can have uh, red color, green color. Um, or in fact, rather, this is you could, for instance, have a like here. This is going to change the material color based on um, how you configure the mixins. So you know, this is where mixins are, are pretty cool because we can pre-configure how the on-click event will work, and then we can attach this mix into any entity in the whole scene. Okay, so let's um, let's have a go at this. Okay, so now let's use the traditional JavaScript way to add event listeners uh, to these these entities, which are the spheres. We'll have to write some JavaScript, obviously. So let's do that up here. So we'll add a script tag for some inline JavaScript. Now, once we've written it and tested it and we know it works, we could always move it out to a separate file. That's easy enough. Um, okay, so we're going to have a few things here. So the first thing we're going to have is a function that is, you know, it represents the action. It's, it's what happens when the object is clicked. So let's call this click handler. Uh, the click handler will take the target element as a parameter. Now what we want to do is the target will be the sphere or the object that can be clicked and when it is clicked that basically we want to take the position, the current position of the target and we want to take the current position of the camera rig and we want to add an animation to the camera rig that will move the camera rig from its current position to the position of the target. Remember the camera rig, the camera is set back in the camera rig, so by moving the camera rig to that position we will um, put the camera in a good, it basically viewing, it'll be in a situation where it's viewing that uh, that object that was clicked on. Okay, so we now need to get the the target position as an object and the um, the camera rig position as a uh, as an object. So the first thing we should do is let's get the camera rig itself. Camera rig document get uh, nope query selector hash camera rig. So this is why we put the ID on the uh, camera rig entity, and the hash just means that it's an ID. So we have that. Then we'll do a. Um, now we get our two positions. So let uh, target pos equal target dot get attribute position. Uh, let target pos. Now what we can do, actually, just to make things simpler, let's make a little function that takes the, that can be given the object and turns it into a string for us. Because when we create the animation, we actually want a string of the three, you know, just like in um, a position. So for instance, here, if we look down at this uh, F left pause, how we have a position of, you know, X, Y, Z in a string like this, that's what we want. So we need to get, we need to convert from the object into the position. So let's do that. So we'll call it uh, ob object to pos. Let's do it this way. And so it's going to take the pos object and it's going to return for us the string. So the simplest way to do this and, and sort of think about what's going on is we'll do pos object dot x plus space plus 
close object dot y plus space that pause object dot z. That's all it needs to do, but it just makes it so much easier now because I can do a uh, object to pause and wrap that around this. So the get attribute will get get us back the position as an object, and this will convert it back into a um, a pause string. And now we have the target pause, and because and now we can do the same thing for the camera, right? So we can have a cam pause equals object pause camera rig dot get attribute position so it's the same thing and now we have that we can actually set the animation so camera rig dot set attribute animation um, now we're going to set the animation without any events or anything we're just going to set it straight on which which will make it happen straight away so we want a actually let's use the formatted string so this is property is position we're going to have uh, from oops need a colon from the uh, target pose sorry cam pose to the target pose and we'll set a duration of and the duration could be say 700 milliseconds so it's not too long but not too short uh, okay so that will set the animation in play and we have that there so now what we can do is we can test this and just make sure the animations working uh, without actually doing any other thing so let's just go here I can right click and go inspect we can get go to the console so let's do a um, let's do let's grab our camera so all I need is the um, a target so let's have a far left equals document dot uh, query selector and we have our file left so that's f just f left uh, that's the ID so we need hash whoa, f left okay so if I go to we should see yep we have that there so now I can do a uh, click handler and I should be able to provide it the F left object and that okay what well, didn't not defined uh, why did I not reload Is it a click handler or not? Okay, that's looking better. Let's try that again. Oh, why do I keep doing that? That ah, works. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need a way to identify all of these objects so we can do it by the IDs but then we have to do it one for each or we can do something like adding a class to each of them and then we can just get a list of objects using the class um, there is another way we could wrap all of these in another entity um, and give an ID to that grouping entity so we could, we could do that as well but that's kind of a little less flexible so let's do class equals move target and we put that on each of the parent entities that have their position okay and then we go back up to the top and now we can write a function that will set up the um, Actually, let's make it first of all. Let's do something that will register the handler. So register handler for click. So it will take a target as well as a parameter. And what what it will do is it will do target dot add event listener for the click event.
and here we create an inline function that calls the click handler with the target click handler target okay so this the target that's called the target that's provided as a parameter when this is called gets bound into this inline uh, function so that the the target element whatever whichever one it is automatically knows how to call this inline function uh, when click happens and it, that this value is sort of baked in now we just need to have a setup function function setup um, handlers so now this is where we use the class to find the group of entities so let uh, target list equal document dot query selector all by dot move target so the dot here means the class and the move target should be the name yep there it is there so this should get us back four objects now we could do a um, let index equal zero now we can do while index is less than the target list length then we'll keep looping through this thing so now we're going to have a um, uh, basically we just do a register handler for click on the target list going for the using the index to grab each item one at a time out of that list so that'll initially be zero but then we need index equals index plus one so the whole idea is we'll we'll get the zeroth item first which is the first item in the list so lists always start or arrays they always start from zero so we'll get that first one out register the handler then we'll add one to the index come back around get the next one out register add one to the index come around and eventually there'll be we'll have got through the whole list and that's the end of it okay so then the last thing we need to do because this function will not be called is we need to register a handler with the window the actual browser window so that when the scene is loaded it will call setup handlers so window dot on load equal setup handlers and that's what we need to do now yes we have our camera rig we have we're ready to go actually so let's reload this i'll just shrink that about i'll leave it open just in case something goes wrong if i click on this it should start animating and it moves us there perfect so it is working so i don't need this I can click on these as much as I want. The red ones aren't move targets, but the way we've done it, I could easily add the class to the, the boxes as well, and we're good to go. So this is working nicely. Okay, so that's that version. Now that we have that, let's make another version that uses a component to deal with the, to register the click handler. And by doing that, we can save all of this up to here right we can basically drop that and just use a component instead and we don't need the class and we'll use this on click script okay so let's do this we'll make a new basically make a copy okay so we'll call this um, component right it's the component approach so here We'll add another script, script source. Source is dot slash on click. We will we'll keep this function and we'll keep this function because they both serve the purpose. They, they're the things that perform the action on the click. So we still need them. We just don't need all this other stuff. So we get rid of them. Maybe a bit of a space there. Now we can have, just like we have the animations, we can actually add another, um, even though it's not strictly an animation, it's something that starts an animation. So we can have a mix in, uh, the ID could be called, um, it's basically move or target. So actually let's use target. 
uh, here we're going to use the on click so on click is the component we've just uh, loaded up here this on click JS will we'll load this um, will make this available to us and all we have to do is provide the click handler now the one thing we have to change actually is on click when a click happens this component will call this function but it will supply the target not as a parameter but as a this variable so I can get rid of that and call this this bit here this and everything else is the same okay so now we have a new mix in which is target I need to basically change this to get rid of the class and put target here and we just do that for all of these in fact if I do target like this can I do uh, hang on got ahead of myself yeah I can do that just paste it in okay so now we have a target component that we add to each of these parents that's all we need and that will automatically register the handler let's try it out so let's make a new tab let's open it up and it will be the and shoot component open that up so it looks exactly the same and I can click on it and it still works that's just using a different mechanism now you might say well how do I know that's not the other one we can search for we can make an environment so a frame environment let's get that the link for this actually you know I'll just copy the whole line that makes it easier okay so up here we'll just put that here so this will give us a um, an environment component which we can add so then down here I'll add environment a entity and if I do this it'll it'll have um, sense of yeah we can just use the defaults and if I go back to the browser and and as you can see this this environment you've got all kinds of different things you can set up now if I reload this one has the environment and this one does not so this is the original one done the pure web way this is the one done with a component way now we can see that indeed it is working properly so there we are a frame entity component system using a component way to register a click handler that moves the camera rig using the regular animations and, and getting mouse clicks through the animation we've set up the mouse cursor to be uh, something we can use mouse events from which is pretty cool um, so this is a, a neat demonstration of a few few interesting things about A-Frame. Okay, well that brings us to a close of our three-part series on using A-Frame, setting up a scene from a design, um, setting up some animation that would be triggered by the click of a, a mouse on certain objects, and then finally how to make a camera rig move around using animation by clicking on an object and setting up those uh, events either through JavaScript in the pure web way or uh, using uh, the on-click component which I created and provided through the website. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button, please subscribe, please share with other people you think might find A-Frame interesting with its version of Entity Component System and if they want to do WebGL projects. Thanks.